possible spoilers ahead. Proceed with caution. Hello everybody, my name is Eat, and today I will be talking about all the books that I read in May 2023. Uh, and there's a lot, so let's just get into it. The first book I read was Poison by Jennifer Donnelly. Uh, Jennifer Don- yeah, Jennifer Donnelly. Um, and I read this book because I read a different one of her books, Stepsister, which was really good, like 4.5, 4.6 out of 5. Um, so I decided to pick up Poison because, you know, again, Substitute was really good. And Poison, it was fun. So it's a rewrite of Snow White, like the classic story of Snow White, where the huntsman did t- did cut out her heart, but then, like, uh, she got, like, an artificial heart from uh, the, the little men, the seven little men in the woods, seven brothers, uh, you know, the seven dwarves, but they're not called dwarfs in this. Uh, and it was interesting, I will give it that. Uh, Sophie, she, her name's Sophie in this, Snow White. Um, she, her, her whole kind of thing is that she has, like, a quote-unquote weak heart, and then, like, through the adventure, like, with her artificial heart, she, like, sees her emotions more, and that, like, being nice and kindness doesn't make you weak, and, like, kindness is a weakness. And all in all, it's a good message. It was all the convenience a lot, like, every time... Sophie was close to dying, like, there was the snake incident, for example. Uh, a dog she helped at one point came and saved her life, Zara. Um, and, like, and the characters were nice, there were arcs and everything. It, it was just, like, every single time Sophie was about to die, she did it. It just felt convenient. That That's all I'll say. Uh, but there is my favorite part of the book, which I just kind of want to talk about for a second. Because I don't think anyone else will, even if they do reveal the, reveal, review this book. Um, the epilogue. Because, alright, so, again, minor spoilers. Um, the villains are pain, like the embody no, not pain. The villains are fear, the embodiment of fear, and his brother, pain. You know, his sis, oh my god, I tell you this. The, the embodiment of pain and his sister, the, I'm cutting this out. The the villains are the embodiment of fear and his sister Pain. Like, Pain's kind of an anti-villain. It's a whole thing. Um, and throughout the book, you didn't really get, like, a feel for the dynamic. Like, Pain kind of works against fear, and fear kind of works against Pain, because fear's the main villain. And Pain kind of helped Sophie and the rest of the guys. And, and at the end, you find out their father is Death. And he kind of joined in at the very last second. And that was all fine in the real book. Like, the actual part of the book. But in the epilogue, you get so much better. Because, um, like, Fear invites his entire family uh, for a picnic. So, they have three other siblings. Uh, so, there's Fear, Pain, their sister Pestilence, their brothers, and their brothers War and Famine. And also, Death's their father. And honestly, I would read, like, an entire novel trilogy about the death family because it was amazing it was just so cute like they were like pesty was shy they're like like death was like a good father it it was actually really cute like you can't describe how like yeah it it was the saving grace of this book and my favorite part of this book and i would read a heck ton more about the death family that's all i'll say anyway poison by jennifer by jennifer donnelly uh, three out of five stars. Just solid three out of five. Okay, and right after that, I read The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. As you can see, I was kind of on, like, a retelling of, like, classic fairy tales, uh, kind of spreaks. I read Stepsister was really good. I read Poisoned. It was pretty okay. And, yeah... Uh, I must confess, I have not read the original fairy tale or, like, legend or whatever that this is based off of. It's like a chi- it's like this Chinese story where they, like, sacrificed brides to the sea god to, um, like, stop him from casting these terrible storms. And this one was okay as well. It was definitely better than Poisoned. But it was, like, nowhere near Stepsister. Like, this one, I'll tell you now, I, uh, is, like, a solid 
3.3, so like maybe 3.35 out of 5. Um, so basically the plot is this girl whose name I totally forgot. That's not because I, she's just forgettable, it's because I'm really bad at names. Uh, Mina. I'm looking at it now. Mina. She, like, uh, her brother, who she loves, like, more than anything, his, like, the love of his life is about to be sacrificed as a bride to the sea god. And he's very upset about that. Uh, the bride, the bride's brother gets sacrificed is really upset about that. And so she, like, Mina sacrifices herself. And, uh, this one was good. Like, um, the characters were interesting. The world was really cool. Like, she goes to, like, this underwater, like, she goes to, like, the world of the gods. And it was definitely really interesting. The characters were nice. I liked this, like, plot twist with, like, something about, like, these three sprites who kind of help her. They're not sprites. I don't remember what they are. They're like ghost things. I don't know. Um, and the romance, the romance was fine. Um, it, I like the, again, I like the plot twists. They were all fun. The characters, they had arcs and stuff. I did really like, it was really interesting because Mina's soul was a magpie. And, like, it was because, like, she was a storyteller. And I thought it was a really fun way to characterize her by literally seeing what her soul was. Uh, and, yeah, it, it was fine. I liked it. Uh, 3.35 out of 5 stars. Alright, after that, I read A Map of Flames by Lisa McMahon, which is the first book in the Forgotten Five series. And I really liked this. I'm definitely going to read the, the next the rest of the series. Book two is out, but it happened on hold in my digital library. And book three isn't out yet. But basically, there's these five kids, and they're like the children of like fugitives, like supernatural fugitives. So, like, okay, the world that like the way supernatural things are kind of per like per perceived, it's kind of like sort of an X Men Incredibles world where like people know they exist. But they're really frowned upon and kind of outcasted from society. It's kind of that whole thing, basically. And so, after all the parents have either left or died, these five children, who are at most 13, at youngest 10, are just kind of on the island. And following uh, Birdie and Brix's father's dying request, they need to go to, like, the mainland to tell their mother something and it was really good the characters were great i love i like the i like the dynamics of like the children and everything it was really fun uh this is like it takes place in like a made-up country and i am really intrigued like there's a lot of mystery building like why are certain people helping some people and whatever like again i, wanna, I don't want to give away spoilers especially because this book was really good uh, but there's Birdie, she can, like, talk to animals with her mind. Bricks, who's really bouncy. Seven, who can, like, turn invisible. Uh, by the way, he's, like, the one I drew here. I also drew Birdie talking to animals. Uh, Cabot, who does who hasn't gotten her powers yet, but she is just really smart and has a photographic memory. Uh, I think she's my favorite character, or maybe it's, it might be the librarian. I think the librarian's my favorite character. Um... And then there's a uh, tenor, I think is his name, and he has like heightened senses and like spend a lot of time in the water. Yeah, the characters are great. Characters are ninety percent of the story for me, so like, yeah, you know, it, it was a fun story. Four point five out of five. Okay, so next I read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, like the first book in the series by Ransom Riggs. And I like this one. Uh, this is like a pretty well known thing, like book and everything. I think I have like a movie and everything. Uh, so I won't get too much into it. Uh, my own personal thoughts though. It, it was nice. I liked it. I had fun. Uh, the characters are all endearing. I love like, it was like a time loop. I'm, time loops are kind of a tricky subject for me because they're one of those things that can be really good or really bad, and it really just depends on how the author utilizes them. 
like obviously that's everything but for me it's like some things are easier to be bad and some things are easier to be good and some things like time loops I just never know if they're going to be good or bad because it's just kind of like a coin toss in the air whether or not they're going to be good or bad but I really like this one it was really an interesting like yeah, the time loop was nice. I liked all the characters and everything. I already said this. Um, like, it, it was good. Uh, four out of five stars. If you want a more in-depth review on Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, you'll probably find one on the internet. I mean, I know this, like, is the internet, but you know what I mean. Case in point, I found some online while Googling on YouTube just now. So, yeah, 4.5 out of 5. It was good. I will read the rest of the series, just not right now, because there's, like, eight books, and that's long. <laughs> But yeah, those are the first four out of 13 books that I read in May 2023. This is part one of a three-parter, because I'm going to do like four books, four books, five books, you know. And yeah, here's all the art I did in the video. Um, you can tell me my voice is annoying and my art is terrible, or you can tell me my voice isn't that bad and that my art is decent. I don't care. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Tell me books you would like me to read or something, and check out the next videos because I have I read a lot and I want to talk about them because I like analyzing stories and talking about stories. And yeah, have a great day. Bye.